Today, uh, so I'm talk about the blessings of science. What is science? It's obvious, isn't it? It's everywhere. You know, we are surrounded by the fruits of science. Mobile phones, computers, the internet, robots, you name it. But what about its spiritual significance? What does science do to our mind, to us as human beings who are born into this world and perish someday? What are the significances of science for our spiritual life? That's what I want to talk about today. Uh, let me start with my personal uh, history. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, I really loved to chase the butterflies in the field. I was brought up in a rural town in the suburbs of Tokyo, and I studied the butterflies really, really carefully. There were exactly 52 butterfly species in, where, in the city where I lived, and I chased and studied all of them. I was known as you know, butterfly crazy kid, and you know, everywhere I would go with his nets and so on. And while I was chasing these butterflies, I was blessed with this wonderful thing, which is the sense of wonder. The sheer abundance of life you know, that I see on the earth, you know, not just only me, but all these little creatures, you know, these wondrous things. Why are they, they here? I mean, wh what brought them here? You know, these were the things that really, really interested me. And in particular, I was interested in the origin of the variation. These pictures, by the way, are not Japanese butterflies. If you are in the butterfly business, you should know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> these are Costa Rican butterflies that I you know, took photos of when, a few years ago. Anyway, um, you know, why are there so much variations in terms of colors, wind, wing shapes, patterns, life histories? habitats, and so on. This is this really interesting, isn't it? All this sheer vast variety of life forms that we find on Earth, including our humble existence. So I think uh, you know, I started the life of a scientist as a very curious child. We all know that kids are very curious and ask these nasty questions. You know, They bother us with, whys and hows and what ifs and so on. And adults, you know, I'm an adult too. Adults normally get really, really, you know, bored. And, you know, they, they kind of don't like this kid's attitude, right, about being, asking questions, you know, being curious and all these things. But, you know, by forgetting how to be curious, we are losing something really, really valuable. Because curiosity is the single important human trait that brought us here. I mean, all these wonderful things that you know, we have today. So without curiosity, we don't have been human beings. And um, we are not alone. Over the history, there were many, many curious people. Those people who never forgot how it feels to be a child, you know, how to be born into this world and to be bewildered by everything that we encounter. For example, uh, Mr. Charles Darwin, he went on this very famous trip on the Beagle. He went to the Galapagos and saw all these wonderf wonderful uh, forms of life on that island. And he became naturally curious. Why are they here? What brought they here? This is a question that presumably the more curious among us have been asking in history over and over again. What is wonderful about science is that it can give an explanation. It, you know, do you remember as a kid when you had a question, when an adult gives you a satisfactory answer, how satisfied you became, you know, how filled you felt? Do you remember that? Science can give you that, an explanation. Um, I was in the school library one day. I guess I was nine years old or something like that. And I bumped into this wonderful book on uh, the evolution of life. My native tongue is in J Japanese, so this book was written in Japanese. But uh, the author discussed at length 
the theory of uh, the evolution of species put forward by Mr. Charles Darwin. That was the first time that I came to know his name. And he wrote this wonderful book called The Origin of Species, in which he laid out these fundamental principles with which we can explain the abundance of life on Earth. Now, um, science is also about exploration. You are not satisfied just with you know, passively given information. You like to start your own exploration. And I started mine. Uh, this is my very first scientific presentation poster at the age of 11, I, in which I reported my research into the butterflies, uh, you know, their life, habitats, all these things. Of course, from a professional's point of view, this is nothing. I mean, this is really shabby. I mean, you know, this is, <laughs> I, I, I'm really ashamed to show you all this. <laughs> but at, at, at the same time, I'm very proud because this is where I began. You know, my pursuit into the mystery of this universe began here. And it was inspired by Charles Darwin and also by my encounters with the butterflies in the wild. Now, um, as you grow older, you meet your hero. And I met my real hero in the person of Albert Einstein. Now, Albert uh, taught me very many things. Um, one of them is how to be independent, how to set your mind free from the customs that are usual in your society, including uh, one in my own country. But Einstein also taught me a very important lesson about science. Namely, science explains many things, but then uncovers yet more mysteries along the way. It is an open-ended business. It never stops, like our own life. You know, you cannot say, oh, wait, now we know enough about the universe, so we can st stop science today. We cannot say that. You discover something, and it, it uncovers yet more deeper you know, uh, mysteries. That is what is wonderful about science. Now, uh, in today's status quo, uh, there are some remaining enigmas like time zero. Why is the past different from the present or the future? Or the wave function reduction? Uh, in quantum mechanics, people try to explain the behaviors of microscopic uh, particles with this uh, concept. But clever people, no matter how they try, have not really discovered how the nature does it. And my own life work, uh, mind and brain, this is really, really interesting. Um, how do the activities of the billions of neurons in your brain, or in my brain, give rise to conscious experience? This is a holy grail of, for neuroscientists today. And you know, we would very much like to have an explanation. We don't have one today, but it would be tremendously interesting if we had a non-trivial explanation of this great mystery. Uh, central to the mystery of the mind-brain problem are qualia. Namely, the sensory qualities like redness, transparency, glitter, that constitute your phenomenal experience. Now, you cannot, you cannot ex express these uh, qualities in terms of numerical orders, like you know, like you, you can do in physics. How on earth, you know, our brain, after all, is a physical entity. You know, it is a complex and very interesting system, but it is just a chunk of you know. Matters. So how come these activities cause phenomenal experience in which we have these wonderful things called choria? Nobody can account for the origin of choria today. Maybe someday a clever person like Charles Darwin would come up with a great book and explain all about the origin of choria, but the book has not yet published yet, so not even on the iPad. So, uh, so let's see. Um, so for me, the blessings of science is twofold. First, it can explain. It can explain many things that we you know, hold to be mysteries about this universe. And you know, it satisfies the child's curiosity to know more about this world that we live in. And secondly, it is an open-ended endeavor. No matter how much you learn about nature, there are more mysteries uncovered. 
Let me finish with um, a famous quote from Isaac Newton. He had something to do with Apple, so that's why I'm wearing an <laughs> Apple t-shirt today. Uh, Isaac Newton said that I was like a boy playing on the seashore and diverting myself now and then finding a smoother pebble or prettier shell than ordinary, whilst the great ocean of truth lay all undiscovered before me. So isn't it wonderful to collect all these pebbles and shells, you know, these facts and explanations and theories? It's fun. We can continue to do that. At the same time, we must be humble. We must acknowledge that we really don't know anything essential about the universe. The great ocean of truth is always before us. So science is wonderful in terms of giving us explanation and also making us humble in the presence of mysteries. So uh, here's the blessing of science for you and me. And thank you very much. <laughs>